to be 18, that his lifelong dream was to be an international pimp. <sighs> yes, he really said that. And of course, NBA scouts were not amused. So instead of going top 10, his ass fell all the way to the second round, signing for 330,000 his first year. That's 70,000 less than what he owed. This man was broke, bro. I couldn't even drive back and forth to the arena. So I had to stay at the arena sometimes. You slept in the arena. I slept in the arena. A professional NBA player. I slept in the arena. Sleep, sleep was basically always a, basically take yeah. that back to the party. Yeah. 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 Basically, oh, that's right. But, but I just couldn't afford the gas. When they did my budget, I could only spend five hundred dollars a month. For you know, that's gas money, <laughs> gas money, girlfriend, two dogs. Like, I, I don't know. I don't need money. Damn, you gotta really fumble the bag. But not as bad as LaMelo Ball, because the way Melo spent his first check is getting him sued for millions. Yeah. In 2019, right after graduating high school, LaMelo hired publicist Amber Johnson to find him some big money brand deals, promising her 10% of the profits. And over the next few weeks, she went to work, pitching a LaMelo documentary to Fox, planning him a sponsorship on Caffeine TV, and most importantly, negotiating LaMelo's biggest offer yet a deal with Puma worth $10 million. And oddly enough, LaMelo heard about the offer. He told his publicist to decline and end negotiations immediately. So Amber canceled the deal and never spoke to Puma again. But in 2020, something suspicious happened. A month before the NBA draft, it was announced that Melo had signed his first big contract, a $100 million endorsement deal with none other than Puma. And after securing the bag, Lamelo spent a bid, copping a $276,000 Ferrari F8 Tributo, a million dollar Richard Mill, and a $2.6 million condo in the heart of Charlotte. Melo was dropping money on everything. Well, everything except his publicist, who claims she didn't receive a dime from Lamelo. Not for the caffeine deal, not for the documentary, and not for the Puma deal. So in January of 2022, she decided to sue Lamelo for $10 million. And our boy Melo is still battling it out of court to this day. But look, not every NBA player blows their first bag on himself. Because Zion Williamson spent his first check saving thousands of families from disaster. See, in March of 2020, during Zion's rookie season, COVID forced the NBA to shut down entirely, leaving tens of thousands of arena workers without jobs. Overnight, people living paycheck to paycheck had their income ripped away, and with no other jobs available, they were left feeling hopeless. The saying, life can change in an instant, is as true as it gets. So, people desperate for help, rookie Zion pulled through and changed some lives, saying, my mother has always set an example for me about being respectful to others. So today, I'm pledging to cover the salaries for all Smoothie King Center workers for the next 30 days. Yeah, that means Zion donated at least $300,000 all from his first check. Damn, I mean, Zion knows how to spend his money. He needs to teach other NBA players how it's done. Because the stories we got coming up are on another level. Want to have a side hustle bringing you an additional income stream, but you don't want to have to build websites or funnels or create video? But before we get to that, we got to talk about Kelly Uber. Because this dude is being blackmailed for millions, all because of his first check. See, in 2015, right after signing his rookie contract, Kelly went out and dropped $12,000 on two new puppets, Saint and Soul. And over the next few years, he built an unbreakable bond with his dogs, even taking them on the road for away games. But in 2019, something terrible happened. After an ugly breakup, Kelly's ex-girlfriend went psycho, refusing to leave his house, slashing his tires, and worst of all, kidnapping his dogs. And this woman was out of her mind. But to be honest, for a pretty good reason. It turns out his ex went completely psycho. Cause Kelly never dropped a like and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, that's right. I got this crazy chick on speed dial. And if you ain't sub, then she's gonna steal your pets and eat them. Trust me, dog. You don't want that to happen. 
Let's, let's go ahead and subscribe, okay? But anyways, Kelly was heartbroken, so he called the cops and even filed a lawsuit, desperately trying to get his dogs back. But somehow, she was able to keep custody of Sen and Soul, and it seemed like Kelly's situation couldn't get any worse. Until January of 2021, when Kelly's ex allegedly threatened to keep Saint and Soul unless he paid her three million dollars. So Kelly filed another lawsuit claiming he was being blackmailed, and he's still fighting for his dogs back to this day. Man, I just feel bad for Kelly. But who I don't feel bad for is LeBron, because this dude turned his first check into millions of, wait, no, billions of dollars. Back in 2003, just a month before the NBA draft, 18-year-old LeBron signed his first big contract, a deal with Nike worth $90 million. And with that kind of money, you think a teenager would have just blown it up. But instead, LeBron decided to hire his best friend, Maverick Carter, as a business partner for 50 k a year. This was genius. Maverick, went on to close all kinds of big money deals for LeBron, turning a 1% stake in Beats into 30 million, creating LeBron's Spring Hill Company, an entertainment brand worth 725 mil. And in 2015, Maverick negotiated the biggest contract in NBA history, a lifetime deal with Nike worth a ridiculous $1 billion. God damn, this man LeBron hired a financial wizard. So inspirational. And not everyone's as fortunate as LeBron. Cause what Trey Young bought with his first check, got his ass clown in front of his entire team. See, in 2018, just a month after being drafted, Trey used 166,000 of his first check to cop his dream car, a brand new 2019 Audi R8. Yeah. And this thing is crazy. 600 horsepower, custom matte black paint, 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. If Trey wasn't on the court, he was whipping the out. Until a few weeks later, when during team practice, his teammates secretly stole his car and trashed it. <laughs> I guess the rookie got top coin. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yo, that's crazy. Oh, that's high level popcorn. Check. Check. <laughs> Trey might be smiling, but I know his ass is crying on the inside. And according to this fan, this R8 still smells like popcorn. Damn. But at least Trey had a car. Because how Giannis spent his first check literally put him on the streets. Yeah. In 2013, when Giannis signed his rookie deal, he wanted to give back to his family. So right before a game in Milwaukee, he took a taxi cab to a local bank, and that's where he wired all of his money back home to Greece. Every last dollar. And you know, that's nice and all, but there was one problem. This man has no car, no money for a cab, and he has a game in 30 minutes. So, my boy started hauling ass. And this six foot nine famous NBA player was sprinting down the streets of Milwaukee to try and make it to his own game. But it turns out he didn't have to run very far. Because after just a mile, he honest caught the attention of one generous Bucks fan. First cold day of the season. We're out shopping and I see, a, like two blocks away, I see a very tall person running. And I think, looks like might be Giannis. He is running and he's wearing jeans and a windbreaker and it is 18 degrees out. And I say, can we offer a ride? He says, sure. He climbs into the back of our car and we have a really little car. We have a Honda Fit, right? Yeah. So he's, and he's sitting in the back seat all like, Hold it. Sideways, knees to chip. I mean, it's the only way you could fit in. Yeah, Giannis' pretzel looking ass didn't have a dollar to his name. And neither did Shaq. Because this man spent his entire first check, one million dollars, in just 30 minutes. How is that even possible? Well, in 1992, before even making it to the NBA, Shaq signed a trading card deal with Classic for a million dollars. And the very next day, he went on the craziest shopping spree of his life. I was to help people this story. I spent a million dollars in 30 minutes.
Shaq spent a million dollars in 30 minutes. He said Mr. Chewbacca and Bubacca on the bench with your stupid self. You, T-Top. Let's do it. I spent a million dollars in 30 minutes. I always wanted a black on black Mercedes Benz. So I had to go get it, boom, 150,000. My father said, that's nice, where's mine at? I was like, you know what? You're right. We'll get the exact same car for him. We get home, my mom's a little jealous. Where's mine at? You know what? So we go and we get her the smaller Benz version. So we got three Benzes. And, and then after that, I drop them off. I was like, I need some jewelry. So I, I buy a big old diamond ring similar to this one. I get another ring for the other hand. I get a bracelet. <laughs> I get some diamond earrings. I get a necklace. And I get a call the next day from the uh, bank manager. He says, uh, they have a conversation with you. So I come up there and shows me the spreadsheet of where all the money went. I forgot about the agent fees. I, I forgot about FICA. I forgot about state tax and sales tax. So I probably netted like 700000 But I didn't know that. I thought I had $1 million. Yeah. This dude forgot about taxes. Man, Shaq's got to regret that one. But I can't say the same for John Moran because he spent his first check on his parents. And it changed their lives forever. See, in the early 2000s, when John was just a kid, his parents knew he was special. So much so that not only did his mom give up her biology career, but his dad walked away from pro basketball just to train thinking that one day, John could become one of the greatest players in NBA history. As John got older, his parents pushed him every single day, from backyard NBA drills to having him play kids twice his age. Hell, they even put a basketball hoop in the living room, all to help him make it to the NBA. By 2019, John had officially achieved his dreams, being the second overall pick in the NBA draft, owing it all to his parents. And John, you always said that your dad gave up his basketball dreams to help you accomplish yours. So tell your dad what this means. It means a lot for both of us. We both know what I've been through. I don't want to get a little emotional up here, man, but I just want to thank him for everything he done for me. Um, he made me who I am today, and I'm just thankful for it all. Great job. And after signing a $39 million rookie deal, John figured. Now just think, Trevon should have been in the NBA with Willie Green when they played basketball together. But Willie Green had sense enough to go to school, but he didn't. Continue on. What better way to blow his first check than by showing his parents some love? Not only copping them both brand new whips, a Hellcat for his dad and an Audi for his mom, but also buying them their dream home. A 9,000 square foot mansion in Tennessee worth $2.1 million. This place has six bedrooms, eight bathrooms, it's got a backyard pool, a home theater. No, it's even got a tennis court. All of this just to show his parents how much he appreciates them. Damn, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> But what's not beautiful is Shaq's diet. Yeah, this man ate so bad, it almost killed him. And don't even get me started on Zion. His ass is getting so fat, he's gonna eat himself out of the league. Huh, you wanna hear more about that? Then click this video right here. This is what NBA players actually eat. Trust me, dog. you don't wanna miss this. So what are you doing? Alf or a laptop? Which one do you think is worth more? Well, definitely not the house, because they not only... Think NBA players eat healthy, but Dwight Howard's diet nearly got him killed. Back in 2004, when Dwight was first drafted, even though he was a pro NBA player, he was just like any other 18-year-old kid. He didn't care about eating healthy. Behind the scenes, he was hooked on sugar. As I got older, it just kept going. I just started to love skills. And all I wanted was skills, 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 and starburst. And, and then I just, you know, I couldn't stop. But by 2012, what seemed like a harmless sweet tooth turned into a deadly dick. As we were playing for the Lakers, Dwight was down over 840 grams of sugar a day. That's 11 times more than the average American. 11. And all that candy was killing Dwight from the inside out. His stomach was inflamed, he was constantly getting injured, and worst of all, he was losing feeling in his body. He can sit down in his chair right now. Uh, 
because of my legs to go numb. You know, just having this just tingling sensation all the way down my legs. So that happens when I play. Uh, that happens, you know, when I'm just sitting on the bed for a couple of minutes. You know, it's not easy. This was a telltale sign of type 2 diabetes. So Dwight called up a Lakers physician for some advice. When she learned about Dwight's candy addiction, she was horrified. Telling Dwight that if he didn't drop the habit, he might not only lose his NBA career, but he could lose his life. When Dwight heard that, he knew what had to be done. I want to live for a long time. And uh, I, I told myself I was going to have to change uh, what I eat, what I drink. And, you know, once I did that, it was, it was just like, okay, this is simple. And I got rid of all the candy. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Now, Dwight may have needed to switch his diet up, but he's not alone. Because he almost lost the diesel all because of his diet. See, in early 2020, Shaq was at rock bottom. He was dealing with the tragic passing of his sister Aisha, his best friend Kobe Bryant, and 28 other close friends. 28. So to cope with his pain, Shaq turned to the only thing that brought him comfort, food, and lots of it. From late night sandwich runs to cookies and cake, Shaq was drowning his sorrows and calories. And after just a few months of binging, the scale started to tip. As eventually, he reached his heaviest weight ever, 415 pounds. By mid-2020, Shaq was in the worst shape of his life, helplessly beating himself to death. But one conversation changed everything. So I did something I never did before, I went to a doctor. And the doctor used that three-letter word that you never want to hear. So they didn't want to die. And now I want to... Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. That's it. You got you got a chance for things up. So now I have sleep back in and cause a whole bunch of other problems. So now I sleep in the seat back machine, but you know, just wanna I wanna be around for a while, so I I eat a lot better than I was. Yeah, Shaq completely revamped his diet, losing over 50 pounds and grew a six pack for the first time in over 15 years. So, it looks like the big man's here to stay. But I can't say the same for Zion, because this man is literally eating himself out of the NBA as we speak. I mean, when he was drafted in 2019, he was already one of the heaviest players, weighing 285 pounds. And as soon as he moved to New Orleans, it was a recipe for disaster. This man Zion was double-fisting crab legs, and his weight started getting really out of hand. To the point where, not only did the Pelicans have to change their entire culinary practice just for Zion, but his own mom had to step in and force him to change his diet, saying all the sauce, bacon, that stuff, you can't have that. Instead, he's sticking to salmon. Uh, Mama Zion? I don't think this diet's working. It's not bad as hell! In fact, during the 2021 season, it was rumored that Zion had ballooned to over 330 pounds. I mean, just to put that into perspective, this chart is every NBA player's body mass index. We got DeMarcus Cousins at 28.2, Nikola Jokic at exactly 29, and then we have Zion at 38.1. The only player in the NBA that is medically obese. And not only that, but Zion is also on rebound payroll. So if you don't drop a like and subscribe to the channel, Zion is going to sit on you. And trust me, dog, you don't want that to happen. So what are you doing? Subscribe. Uh, 